Today we're going to start branching out and looking at some other teams' seven-round mock drafts. We're sticking with the NFC North, and today we're doing the Detroit Lions. Before we get started, I know this is a Detroit Lions video, but please be sure to check out the Packernet podcast. If you, even if you're a Lions fan, you got to keep up with what the enemy's doing, man. And I'm doing it five days a week once the season gets started, seven days a week. It's good to just put it in your uh, in your roles there if you're ever curious what's going on. Otherwise, please make sure to subscribe to this channel. This is a Green Bay Packers slash NFL draft channel. So uh, lots of draft content on here. We're doing every single week a first round mock draft as well as, as you can tell, team seven round mock so hit the subscribe button hit the little bell notification so you don't miss an episode with that let's get started with the seventh pick in the 2021 nfl draft the detroit lions select micah parsons linebacker penn state now i know you guys have some players here right you've got Collins, who's kind of an edge rusher slash linebacker, kind of a weird thing. You got Davis, who I'm sure you know you don't like. But then there's Jelani Tavai, who maybe you're a little bit more excited about than not. Also, keep in mind, you're picking at seven. There's not just an unlimited supply of whatever you want that's there, right? There's there's certain guys that are there and certain guys that aren't. And I think Micah Parsons is one of those elite prospects that has the possibility of falling to seven. By the way, seven is is obviously not a guarantee of where the Lions will be picking. I'm not trying to dog you just for fun. I'm using Tankathon right now as my reference for where you will be picking. So, real quick, picks 7, 39, 71, 103, 135, and 167. That's picks uh, through one through six round. You don't have a seventh round pick. Um, but I, I just, I'm not impressed, and I'm not really expecting Jelani Tavai to take a big step. And Micah Parsons, either way, is going to guarantee he's going to be better than anybody you currently have. Um, on top of that, you've got guys that are probably going to be leaving pretty soon. Uh, Raglan is probably going to be gone. Davis needs to go. Collins is an older guy, and again, he's a lot of his play is going to be off the edge. So you look at that, and you look at the fact that the interior is just kind of in shambles, especially this year, although next year, uh, presumably... You're going to have at least one of your guys back. But th there's nobody on the interior anymore. Snacks is gone, and the, the big Alabama guys, all, all these guys that were really big and strong on the inside are gone. we got to kind of fortify that a little bit. So I'm going to get you Micah Parsons. He's going to be able to cover. He's going to be able to play against the run. He's going to be able to help you out on the interior. And, you, you know, you got Trufant and Okuda. you got some decent safeties. You've got Flowers off the edge, who I think was actually relatively underrated. I know statistically he didn't really wow anybody, but if you look at some of the more advanced stats that PFF was putting out as far as like win rate, he was like top five in win rate, which essentially just means beat the guy in front of you. So um, he didn't finish as much as he liked, but looking at the defense, which is I think the biggest area of need, you could look at wide receiver because you're going to be losing some pieces there. Um, if a guy like Jamar Chase is there, I think that's another solid option. But I think at seven, if the if – the, uh, Sorry about that. If the Lions are there, a guy like Micah Parsons could really be a massive upgrade and a big help to this team. Again, not trying to dog Jelani Tavai, but I don't think he's the kind of guy that you look at and say, nah, we're good. I don't think so. With the 39th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Tyler Shelvin, defensive tackle LSU so six foot three 362 pounds it's pretty obvious what I'm doing I talked about the interior of the defensive line not being what it was and kind of being one of the bigger weak spots so we got linebacker that can really play cleanup especially with this athletic kind of guy but I think what you want especially with a guy like that like Micah Parsons who's kind of a, a flowy sideline to sideline not that he can't take on blocks but if you're able to keep him clean all the better. And and let's be honest, this is a Snacks Harrison replacement. We obviously want a guy like that, just a big run clogging kind of guy. And at 362, he might be a little bigger than you'd like, I guess, but he can cut him down a little bit, get him to 350 at least. I don't know. I think 330 is sufficient for that. But no question what Tyler Shelvin is going to bring to the defense. Um, and right now, he's kind of sitting in that, you know, early second round range which says a lot when you're 362 pounds and you're a run defender and you're an early second round guy and you don't provide hardly any pass rush he's real good at what he does so you look around and you look at the Dalvin Cooks you look at the the Packers with Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon and and both of those teams really wanting to run the ball a lot um 
and you're, you're really just going to bolster that, right? You've already got your corners and, and safeties, as I've said, and, and you're going to be a kind of team that wants to throw the ball a lot. So you, you run up the score, but what you don't want is a team that's just going to slowly grind this thing down, right? As a Packer fan, I know that that's one of the things that's really frustrating when you want to just go, 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 and the other team is just grinding out clocks so you can't run up the score. Tyler Shelvin isn't going to let that happen. Micah Parsons isn't going to let that happen. You want to play with the Lions, you're going to have to be a big boy, and you're going to have to throw the wall around a little bit. With the 71st pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Terrace Marshall, wide receiver LSU now so back-to-back -back LSU guys we got his teammate and um, really what this comes down to is the fact that we've got Kenny Galladay but we've also got a couple of guys that are up in age that we'd like to move away from but I'm not sure we really have anybody to replace them right Marvin Jones Danny Amendola they serve a purpose but ideally we get some younger more talented guys to complement Kenny Galladay and that's what we got here. Obviously, we've got uh, Quintez Cephas that we're hopeful can step up and, and be something special. But he went where he went in the draft for a reason. Obviously, there's a little bit of off-field stuff. But I think he ran like a 7-second 40 time or something. <laughs> I'm exaggerating, but it was pretty bad. So it's not a guarantee. A lot of people like him. But we, we'd like to kind of solidify this a little bit. So we're going we're gonna to look at Terrace Marshall out of LSU and see if he can be a good complement to what we have with Kenny Galladay on the other side. With the 103rd pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, we're in the fourth round now, the Detroit Lions select Rashawn Slater, offensive lineman, Northwestern. The reason I say it that way, um, he's listed here uh, as far as the draft network as an offensive tackle. We're actually planning on playing him along the interior. That's why I have interior offensive lineman as his position. That's what IOL stands for, if you didn't know. That's, that's the plan for him, at least for me. Um, at six foot four, 315 pounds, he's a pretty big dude. Um, so my, my, my thought, I, I like Decker. I like Halapalavati Vaitai. Ha! Ha ha ha! I think I said it right. I love saying his name when you say it right. Otherwise, you sound like a dummy. Um, but I, I'm not so sure about the interior. Obviously, Ragnow is a fantastic player. But especially at that right guard spot with Wiggins, add in the fact that not only do we want to, of course, protect Stafford, but we're, we're clearly trying very hard to get this running game going, right? We, we, we drafted a second-round pick a couple years ago. I, I personally would not have given up on him, and I don't know that they are. I know he didn't quite produce what you thought, but with injuries and everything else, I, I kind of keep expecting him to step up. Either way, we're going to continue on now, and we've got two running backs that, in my opinion, have the potential to step up. Um, obviously, we've got Carry On, but we also added DeAndre Swift. So with, with the two running backs now, Carry On and DeAndre Swift, on top of anybody else that we feel like throwing in there, Getting the interior, especially the the uh, excuse me, getting the offensive line, especially the interior going, I really think is going to help out this offense. That is a solid offense and is an offense that is largely pretty respected, but has never really had a run game that's been respected. If you can add that dynamic, if you can add in the ability to run on teams um, to a much better degree than you have been, and let's not forget T.J. Hawkinson is there. So you get the, the running game going. You've got T.J. Hawkinson hopefully in year two that's really going to be able to step up as another dynamic. So, you, you know, you're occupying the linebackers with the running backs. You've got the tight ends. You know, it, it becomes more of a a fully dynamic offense as opposed to just an, a downfield aerial assault type offense that the Lions have, have done a very good job with. Matt Stafford has done a very good job with. But again, we've got the interior of the defense kind of locked up so you're not running against us. We can run against you. We can attack you at the tight ends. Now we can attack you with the wide receivers. I'm running out of holes to fill at this point. Is Obviously, assuming these guys can pan out, but interior offensive line in the fourth round may as well be a second-round pick because those guys tend to slide. Every reason to believe he's going to be taken over for, for Wiggins or Dahl um, year one. With the 135th pick in the fifth round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Colby Harvell Peel, safety, Oklahoma State. Now, I mentioned I, I do like the safeties that you have. The, the concern that I have would be, I guess, at, at best, it's a depth issue. Um, but you look at after 2020, so we're talking about this is the 2021 draft. These guys might already be gone. Deron Harmon, Miles Killebrew, J. Ron Curse are all free agents after this year. 
in the 2021 season, Tracy Walker will be in the last year of his contract, meaning, you know, he'll probably get an extension. But at the very least, we're going to need a little bit of depth on top of some competition because the guys we have are good, but not entirely not replaceable, right? Tracy Walker has been playing well above um, expectations. I expect him to continue to be a good football player. But again, at the very least, we're going to need a little bit of depth behind the guys that we have. Because if we're going to be paying Tracy Walker and Will Harris or whatever, uh, J. Ron Curse, who you picked up from Minnesota, he had a great year last year. But first of all, the Vikings make guys look like freaks at safety. It doesn't matter who you are. You could be a, a guy walking off the street, coming on the field. Going to be a great safety. Um, beyond that, he he wasn't very good for about the first three years. Had an explosion of a year. I kind of expect a big amount of regression from him. So I'm, I'm not putting a lot in J. Ron Curse. So, again, it's it's mostly a depth play, but there's an outside chance that he could step up and be a starting safety, maybe. I don't know. We're in the fifth round, man. What do you want from me? Finally, with the 167th pick in the sixth round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Lorenzo Neal, defensive tackle, Purdue. So if the name sounds familiar, you might remember linebacker Lorenzo Neal. I believe he played for the Saints for quite a long time, probably up until recently. But he, this is the son of that Lorenzo Neal. So um, he's got the bloodlines going for him. He's 315 pounds. Seems like a relatively big dude, but but from what I understand, he's a fairly athletic guy. So we're staying big. We're staying stout up front. Again, we've, we've got a big defensive line. That's kind of what we're going for, right? Even Trey Flowers is kind of on the bigger end of that spectrum. But then we got the linebackers that are a little more quick and agile and all that kind of stuff. But we got a little bit better of a pass rush. I shouldn't say better of a pass rush in the sixth round, but he's a little bit more athletic than what we got in the second round. Um, and on top of that, as you know, the, the defensive line, even though we've already addressed it, you need a lot of guys. And right now we have one. So we're just going to continue to bolster that up. We're going to get Lorenzo Neal out of Purdue. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments, please leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought about the mock and some different thoughts that you have in terms of what direction you'd like the Lions to go. Otherwise, please check out the Packernet podcast. Please subscribe to this channel and I'll catch you next time.